Hello folks, so we're going to build this Next.js based application with Langflow API, which has this beautiful text, animation, colors, and not just a landing page, we're also going to be building the chat widget where we can chat directly with the Langflow API and get responses back. And it has nice animation to say that it's thinking and also it's going to get the response back. And we're going to be building this step by step by chatting with v0.dev. This is by Brazil and also taking that over to cursor and chatting with cursor. So most of the code is generated by these tools. We are just going to be prompting and generating the application. So first thing we're going to do is we will go to the v0.dev. This is by Brazil and we're going to give a prompt. So what I asked is for it to make a landing page for me and with a few things, I want it to be sectional and I want it to look nice, something that shows that it's an AI app. So I gave that prompt. It came up with a nice looking landing page, but I wanted it to be even better. So I asked it to make it even more futuristic with more glows and animations or so. And then I wanted it to be black background, just simple prompts. And at the end, it generated this landing page, which I found it quite nice. So I'm happy and we can use this as landing page for our application. And next thing I wanted to do is to have a chat interface. So I just asked for it to create another page and this will be for the chat interface. So it created this chat uh, widget, which is quite nice. If you type in, it has this loading option. It has the response. It shows nice gradient colors. So I'm quite happy with both of these pages. And these are the pages we're going to use in our application. Now, next is we want to create a free account with Datastax Astra. And this is the web URL astra.datastax.com. And in here, you can create a free account. I'm going to go to Langflow. And once you go to your Langflow account, you might see a blank screen. In my case, I had a few projects. And the way I created that is I started a new project here and I wanted to create a sequential task agent. So that's the one I see here. And the cool thing is this is a template available for you to use right away. You just need to provide your open AI API key. And that's basically it. And we're going to be utilizing the API feature available in the Langflow. So we will copy paste this and ask cursor to help us build the application around it. So what I'm going to do is I created a new folder. This is an empty folder. I'm going to open cursor and point it to this folder. Great. And this is what we're going to open in a new cursor window. Now on cursor, I want to utilize the chat option. I want to brainstorm together with cursor and build the app together. So I'm asking Cursor to help me get started building an XJS chat app and walk me through the whole process step by step. And I just want two pages here, the landing page and the chat page. And then I'm going to provide code for each of those. And also I'm saying that the chat page will connect with the API from Langflow. And that's the API code that we're going to get from Astra and provide it to Cursor. So first thing I'm going to do is copy the code over from V0 for each of these for landing page for chat widget. So I'm going to go to the one that I like. I'll copy this code, paste it here. So next thing we're going to go down, add for the chat widget. And last is to get the curl command. So I'm going to use tweaks and I will copy all of this and then paste it here and then let cursor go through all of it and help us out. Okay, so we're going to follow through each of these steps. So we'll start with step number one, which is to run this. So a trick is to use the terminal and run commands directly from cursor. So we can just hit run and it's going to run the command for us. Now we can follow the suggestions provided to us. So I'm just going to quickly follow these. Great. Now it's going to go through the installation steps. Cool. Now we're going to CD into the chat app as suggested by cursor. And next is to install these things. So let's do that. So there are a couple of things suggested by V0 as well. So I'm going to copy these over. Also install these just to make sure we're not missing out on anything. 
Okay, great. Now it says that the next step is landing page. So we're going to create a new file called page.tsx in app directory. So let's go in there in app directory. I can see that we already have that available. So now we're going to take all of this and add it to our page.tsx. Easy ways to apply it and then continue. So it's going to go through and do the work for us. I'm just going to accept it for now. And then it says to bring the full component code in here from the one that we got from v0 let's do that paste all of that right here there is just the top portion that is redundant so I'm gonna take that out and we will run this in a minute to make sure everything works fine now next is that we need to create a chat page so this is something it says to create the chat page in the app directory so I'm gonna do that and then we'll apply the changes here as well to the chat page. And then again, we need to paste the full chat page component here. Okay, we're going to paste that. And again, make sure we're not having something redundant. So we'll take that out. Okay, so now the next step is to open the app layout.tsx updated to include the necessary metadata and global style so we're going to apply it to layout.tsx and it will go through the changes and then we are going to save all of those next step we're going to update the globals.css which is the file available here and also apply changes i'm going to accept that now I'm going to ask for it to provide next steps and also refer. So if we use at symbol, we can provide either file or folder. So in this case, I just typed in chat and then I selected the chat app folder. So with that, we can provide a reference to the folders available here. Another easy way is for you to drag and drop any of the files. So I could just bring in any of the files from the left or folders and reference that in the chat window. Great, now it's asking for us to make a few changes. So we're gonna go to each of these files. So first is the page.ts. We're going to import link. So I'm just going to hit apply. A few changes suggested by cursor. And we are just going to accept that for now. Next is the API for these files creation. One could have used Composer. It makes it a bit easier where it already creates all these API routes for us. We're going through the chat steps so we can continue with this. Again, if at any point you'd like to use Composer, feel free to open Composer and ask for it to generate all of this for you. So I've created the API chat route and I am going to apply this here. Accept it. We need to make a few changes. So I'm going to hit apply and continue for the cursor to make changes for us. So it seems like it made the changes. I'm just going to go ahead and accept it as is for now. We'll see if there are any errors. Next step is for us to go and set this environment variable. So we're going to create a new file.env.local. This is within the chat app folder. And in here, we're going to add the token. And this token can be generated within Langflow. So if you hit generate token, it will give you a string that you can bring it over to Langflow and paste it here. I'm going to save this file and let's see if there is anything else remaining. So now it says for us to update the next.config.js, which is available here, but I see it's the .mjs version. So I'm going to ask Cursor to help us out with this particular format. I'm asking that we have this particular file, so give code for that and also provide next steps. So let's keep going. So I'm going to change this file, apply the changes and accept then save it. Let's, let's go to the next step. So we already did this. So we have that file available. Now next is we are going to go to the chat route. So I can just click that, come in here. So it's asking for us to modify and add the environment variable. And I can see that it's pretty much the same before and after. So sometimes you might notice that it might just suggest something which is not necessarily something to change. If you feel like there might be something, go ahead and apply it. It's probably not going to be anything changed here. So you can see that nothing changed. You can just accept it. Now we can test the application. So this is the moment of truth. There might be a few errors, but we can work with cursor to solve those. 
So let's hit run and we're going to see what happens. Oh no, there is some error. So let's take this error from either copying here or you can go back and you can see the error in the terminal. So what you can do is just ask cursor to help us out with that. All right, so I'm gonna go to add to chat and help us solve this. So there is some suggestion where you're gonna go to the page.tsx and remove the default export from this function. So basically it's asking to change this to these lines here. We're just gonna hit apply here. So it made the change for us. We're gonna accept it and run again and then save this. So it's gonna refresh the app in the terminal and let's see if there is any other error right now. Oh, there we go. So we have the landing page working. So that's awesome. All of the animations and the text, everything shows up properly and this is looking cool. All right, so I'm gonna go to the next step, which is to go to the chat. So I asked for it to make the buttons to take to chat widget. So we're gonna do that. Okay, seems like there is some error. So I'm gonna ask that, you know, my app is not able to find the chat page. Is there something wrong with the file or folder structure? Because usually that's where it is not able to find the page at all. Now it came back with a few results. So it says just to make sure that we have this first page available and then it sees that it is available. And then also in page.tsx, we are using link to navigate. So that also looks correct. And then it says that for our next JS 13 and later, we should have a folder structure like this. So that's probably what's missing. So we are gonna make our change accordingly. So I'm gonna go to the app folder, create a new folder here, and then we're gonna call this chat. And within that, we're gonna move the page chat.tsx. So since it wants the name to be page.tsx, we'll change that. Okay, now what I did is I stopped the app and then I started again, it gave some error. So I'm just gonna copy this error and see how we can resolve it. I'm gonna quickly go to that file and in here change the default export to the one mentioned by cursor. Okay, so that's changed. We'll accept it, save this. It seems like it worked fine. I see the 200 working good. Okay, now we have the chat window as well. So I'm just gonna type in child here and run. So what should happen ideally is it should send the message to the Langflow backend and get a response back. It's gonna take a few seconds since it is a an agent application which has multiple agents working together. There is a way you could perhaps have some sort of logging or some way of saving the chat messages so you know that the back and forth communication is happening properly. But for now, we'll just get started to see if it works. Okay, there is some error. So we're gonna go back to the terminal and then again ask Cursor to help us out. So I'm gonna take the code provided to us and then ask it here to modify based on this code suggestion, which is exactly from here. So there were two changes I had to make. One is I realized that the response back from the API was in a certain format. So I just asked cursor to use this API response format. And then it suggested for me to make changes to our chat widget. And second thing was I realized that the application that we had for agent took quite some time to run the whole flow. So instead of that, I used a simple flow just to test if the connection works fine or not. And with that, we have our application working. So I can just ask, and then we see that it is typing and then it gets a response back from Langflow and it displays that in the chat widget. So this is quite nice. Now, the next step of course is to make an agent app which has a few blocks so we could perhaps have maybe one agent task to begin with and then keep adding until we know that the errors are resolved and then we can increase the timeout to work with our application.
as a next step, we can ask Cursor to help us deploy the app to Vercel, which is a few more steps. Cursor can help us easily go through. Hope you enjoyed the video. Let me know if there are any particular aspect you would like to learn more about.